Hi, and welcome to today's webinar presenting what's new with DraftSite 2023. My name is Jack Lane, and I will be your presenter today. I'm a DraftSite application engineer here at Dassault Systems, and I've been using various 2D and 3D CAD programs since 2010. If you have questions during today's presentation, please feel free to ask through the live Q&A in the Zoom interface. In today's presentation, I'm going to cover some of the major features and upgrades to be introduced in DraftSite 2023. But first, let's take a quick look back at the exciting features that were introduced last year in DraftSite 2022. Real-world objects represented by blocks can often be built into variations, for example, a door with different sizes, shapes, and orientations. These variations have led to a large amount of separate blocks and DWG files, which have been hard to manage and take up a lot of storage space. In DraftSite 2022, we introduced the ability to integrate multiple variations into one single block. Custom blocks greatly reduce block and file quantities by the total number of variations, saving dozens, hundreds, even thousands of files. Dynamic blocks from other CAD tools integrate multiple variations into a single block, which is a key feature that users love. Since DraftSite 2021, users have been able to view dynamic blocks with full configurability. You can go one step further in DraftSite 2022 with the ability to convert dynamic blocks into DraftSite custom blocks and edit them with their configurations. This has helped users efficiently reuse legacy data and significantly ease the transition to DraftSite. It was extremely time-consuming and error-prone to manage and print a large amount of drawing sheets across multiple DWG files. In DraftSite 2022, users could manage sheets efficiently with the Sheet Set Manager and create and update a sheet list table as a summary with direct access to the individual sheet listed. Flexible selection sets can help quickly access desired specific sheets for later reuse. Long hours staring at computers can exhaust users' eyes, especially when the screens display a high level of brightness. To improve user vision and alleviate fatigue and exhaustion, we introduced the dark mode option in DraftSite 2022. All the interface elements were redesigned to purposely fit the dark display without compromising the contrast and display results, making this a productive and pleasant user experience. Splines are used to create a smooth curve which generally passes through a set of predefined points. DraftSite 2022 added a new option under the fit creation method called knots. Knots is one of the computational methods that determines how competent curves between specific points are blended. You can also quickly switch between the control vertices and fit methods, even after a spline has been created. This supports the translation of legacy data created with the fit method into the control vertices method. We also added a dedicated command, spline edit, to quickly edit splines on the go. Now let's take a look at the exciting features to be introduced in DraftSite 2023. Here is the full breakdown of each feature and what edition of DraftSite they are going to be available on. Please note that the features in the left column will be available on all editions of DraftSite, and the features on the right-hand column will be available only in the 3D Experience edition of DraftSite. The features available on every edition of DraftSite will be the Annotation Monitor, Data Extraction Wizard, Contextual Ribbon Tab, Cycling Selection Tool, Improved Page Layout Manager, and Home By Me Improvements. The features on the right-hand column that are only available in 3D Experience DraftSite are Offline Mode and Batch Upload. Now let's jump right into the first feature, the Annotation Monitor. It is very common to have dimensions and annotations become disassociated with an object during drafting. Quickly identify annotations that are lacking association to an entity with the new annotation monitor. The annotation monitor can be turned on and off via the status bar below the command window. Once activated, a visual cue is shown on every dimension or annotation that is not associated with an entity. This monitor also adapts to the changes that are made to the drawing in real time. For example, if we add a dimension here, and then alter or delete the entities that the dimension is tied to, the monitor recognizes the change and alerts the user. This is useful when utilizing constraints or 3D model geometry. The warning icon also acts as a functional item that allows you an easy method of reassociating the dimension or annotation. If you click on the warning symbol, a small pop-up gives you the option to either reassociate or delete the annotation. When choosing to reassociate, you are then given instructions in the command window on how to properly do so. 
Ensuring that every dimension and annotation is correctly associated can save a lot of time and headache and is especially useful when projects are still being updated in the design phase. The annotation monitor is a visual and procedural tool to speed up annotation checking and helps to quickly complete annotation of modified drawings. The next feature we will dive into is my personal favorite because of how powerful it can be when used to its fullest extent. In my previous experience, I've had numerous situations where I wish I had this exact tool. In DraftSite 2023, you can use the new data extraction feature to export not only attributes, but any data from the drawing. Let's make an example with the blocks. We choose the blocks whose data has to be exported and then select which data we want to keep. We can extract data from a specific area of a drawing, the entire drawing, or multiple different drawings. The data can be exported to a CSV file for Excel or inserted as a table inside our drawing. After inserting this table, we see how many times each block was inserted and can add rows below to add additional information. DraftSite also supports formulas and tables as well as table entities. We can provide design flexibility by combining drawing data with external data into a single source while reducing errors and fostering collaboration within the organization. Let's take a deeper look into the data extraction feature by using a practical application. For this example, we want to know exactly where these outdoor dining tables are going to be installed relative to a real-world reference point. First, let's set our reference point by creating a new CCS coordinate origin. This establishes a new X and Y plane that will be used as a reference on site. Make sure to double check that the coordinate system you just created is selected and not the world coordinate system. This will ensure that the correct reference point is used. Now we can start our data extraction. Here we are going to create a new data extraction DET file and save it in the folder of our choosing. Because we are only interested in the outdoor dining tables, not the indoor ones, we will highlight only the outdoor elements within this current drawing. Now that we have our elements selected, we want to filter them down and only select the dining table block titled DS Furniture Table and Chairs. Next, we select our position X property and position Y property. Using the category filter section makes it easy to filter the list down to the properties we are interested in. Here, we can preview what our table output will look like and edit as needed. We have the option to toggle combining identical rows, showing the count column, and showing the name column. Once it looks good, we can insert a table into the current drawing and export a table to a CSV file in the folder of our choosing. Our last step is to edit the format of the table that will be inserted into the drawing. We can create a new format or use a pre-existing table style. Now we have successfully inserted a table of X and Y coordinates for the outdoor dining tables. We can also open Excel to view our generated CSV file of the same table. This data can now be utilized in the field to aid in installation. If we want to edit the table further, we can unlock the cells and update what we need to. Streamline the design process by reducing the manual counting and entering of table data through the extraction of selected entities and blocks within the drawing. The next addition I want to talk about will help when you are working in more complex drawings that might have multiple external references at once. Declutter overlapping entities and streamline design workflow with the new Cycling Selection tool. Often when drafting, we find ourselves with overlapping entities, and it can be difficult to select the entity we want, especially in complex drawings. Now, sifting through those entities has never been easier. First, let's recap the selection tools introduced previously in DraftSite. Entities can be selected simply by clicking on them or using our Window Selection tool. If you drag your mouse left to right, the selection window will be blue, and only the entities fully inside will be selected. Drag your mouse right to left, 
and you'll create a green capture window and all entities that cross its border will be selected. After selecting entities, you can also remove items from the current selection by holding the Shift key and selecting the items again. However, these selection tools can fall short when entities are overlapping because it can be difficult to differentiate between what you want selected. Our new cycling selection tool solves this shortcoming in a much more intuitive way. If you hover your cursor over these overlapping entities, you will see this icon. Selecting these entities with the icon displayed will prompt you with a list of entities and allows you to choose which of the overlapping entities you want. This dynamic highlighting will also present itself in the properties bar, which can be useful if identical blocks with different names are placed on top of each other. You can toggle the cycling selection setting on the status bar below. The cycling selection tool saves time dealing with overlapping entities and allows for faster and easier design of complex projects. Our next new feature streamlines the hatch creation and modification commands. In order to work more efficiently in our drawings, we have added easier access to our tools with the new Contextual Ribbon tab. DraftSite's customizable and user-friendly interface has now been enhanced further with this smooth and intuitive feature. You can now view and modify entities with a maximized viewing and working area to work more comfortably. For now, there is a new ribbon only for hatch creation and editing, with more coming for additional features and commands. Previously in DraftSite, when creating a hatch, we were prompted to edit the properties of the hatch in a window. This old process and window blocked our view of the drawing and interrupted workflow. This new contextual ribbon now allows for real-time editing and previewing of properties without blocking your view with a separate window. For example, if I select this hatch, we can see the corresponding contextual ribbon that allows us to edit properties. You have options to either select the line work or entities you want, or specify a point within the space to create the hatch. If you want to remove an area of the hatch, do so with the delete boundary command. Under the properties panel, you can change the hatch's angle, scale, and spacing. As you can see, these property changes are reflected in real time. If we go to the mode panel, we can set the hatch as annotative or match the properties to an existing hatch. With additional options, we can set the transparency adjust layers and colors, and add a background color to the hatches. This contextual ribbon tool allows us to work more efficiently with our drawings and will continue to do so as we add more ribbons to more entities. Collaborate with others on drawings internally or externally with our new updated Page Layout Manager. What we implemented with DraftSite 2023 is the ability for print settings to be saved within the drawing file itself. Prior to this, we used to save print settings as an external configuration file, or CFG file. From 2023, we are providing an option to users either to continue working the old way with configuration files, or to switch to Page Layout Manager where their print settings are saved within the drawing for anyone to access. This option makes it easy to send drawings to others so they can edit and use the correct print settings without needing to attach the corresponding configuration file. In order to activate the new Page Layout Manager, first navigate to the Options window and go to the System Options section. Expand the Printing section, then the General Options section from there. Make sure the option to Use Page Layout Manager is turned on, then restart DraftSite to activate the new manager. The ability to save page layouts within drawing files is especially useful for users who do not always use industry standard sheet sizes. Now that DraftSite is reloaded, let's make sure we have multiple sheets within this DWG file. To attach a page layout, navigate to the Page Layout Manager through the Print section and then import whatever configuration or CFG file you would like to use. Once it is imported, activate it and you will see that we have applied that layout to Sheet 1. 
Let's now go to sheet 2 and repeat the process in order to attach the same layout to it as well. Here we can see we have attached the page layout and print settings to both sheets within this file, and we can now send it to others to print without having to change the layout settings. Save time adjusting print settings by reusing saved print configurations within the drawing or drawing templates in page layouts. Let's take a look back at one of our members of the vibrant ecosystem of products connected with DraftSite, Home by Me. Home by Me is our solution for interior design, and we have made enhancement to the program for 2023. Since Home by Me integration was introduced in 2019, some major changes have been made to their servers, which have affected the functionality in DraftSite. We have decided to re-architect Home by Me's integration into DraftSite, resulting in a feature that is back and better than ever. As you can see on the right panel, the new login page can be seen with improved functionality and options to log in via email, Apple ID, Google account, or Facebook account. Once we sign in, we can highlight a project and select it for import. When the project loads, use the drop down menu and select what floor you want to generate, and it will appear in the workspace. The floor plan can be inserted with predetermined dimensions and annotations, as well as door and window blocks. If we have a file saved to our desktop, we can select the Browse category and import it that way. Under the Settings tab, we can change the units, scale, position, and rotation of the imported project. Now more than ever, we can seamlessly edit floor plan designs created using Home by Me in all editions of DraftSite. Now that we've gone over the features available on all editions of DraftSite, let's take a look at the features available exclusively on 3D Experience DraftSite, Batch Upload and Offline Mode. First, let's talk about a feature available on both professional and premium versions of 3D Experience DraftSite, which increases adaptability in your workflow. Work anytime and anywhere, regardless of internet connection, with the new Offline Mode. Never lose design changes with local file saving, and easily save to the 3D Experience platform when you are back online. In today's world of a dynamic and flexible work environment, it is a necessity to have the ability to stay productive when you may not have immediate internet access. In order to activate offline mode, click the drop down help button located in the ribbon and select work offline. It is important to note that you must have a desktop shortcut to any 3D Experience app you are planning to use offline and you lock and download all 3D experience files you want to edit or view while offline. Next, you can choose how long you are planning on working offline, up to 30 days. By selecting OK, you will initiate offline mode. Now that we are offline, seen on the application bar in the 3D experience panel, we can only save files locally to our PC and are not given the option to save to 3D experience platform, as you can see with the block save options. Any changes made to drawings will be saved in the My Work folder by default, but you can set it to any folder of your choosing. Any externally referenced files will be maintained in your drawings in offline mode, even if the reference was set up over a network. Here, I am opening an external reference and making slight changes to the layout. Each assigned license is cached locally on your computer when you start working offline to avoid a license being accessed on multiple computers. The licenses are returned to the network once offline mode is turned off and DraftSite is restarted. To stop offline mode, simply select Work Offline again, the same way we did before, and we will be prompted to sign back into 3D Experience. Now that we are connected to the 3D Experience platform again, let's update the files with the new edited versions. All we have to do is navigate up to the Save drop-down menu and click Save to 3D Experience. Now our changes that we made while offline are applied and synced to the files saved within the platform. Offline mode lets you continue your work without interruption even when internet connectivity is limited or lacking. The ability to work offline can provide adaptability to your workflow, like taking DraftSite into field settings where you may not have internet access. We have listened to feedback from our 3D Experience DraftSite users and are excited to talk about the next new feature in DraftSite 2023. A common challenge users face when switching to the 3D Experience platform 
is the amount of existing data that they need to migrate. With DraftSite 2023, you can now batch save to 3D Experience. In order to bring up the batch save options window, simply run the command batch save to 3D Experience and the window will appear. Users can upload and save multiple folders containing DraftSite files to a collaborative space of their choice within the platform. These folders are added through the folder upload section at the top of the window. We can also check for duplicate files with the click of a button to avoid copies or overwriting files. Users can check the location of the duplicate files to further organize their storage. As shown currently, you can block users from saving files if there is a duplicate found. Only once duplicates are addressed can you batch upload to the 3D Experience platform. You can follow along with the upload progress as well. Also note that externally referenced files in the uploaded drawings will be saved and uploaded with the references intact. Speed up onboarding and deployment by easily migrating batch drawings to the 3D Experience platform. To conclude, I would like to summarize the features we talked about today and how they improve the quality of your workflow. Our new annotation monitor helps you quickly identify annotations that have no associativity or have been disassociated. Easily reassociate annotations to objects or entities to complete and manage drawing annotation. With the new data extract tool, we can provide design flexibility by combining drawing data with external data into a single source, while reducing errors and fostering collaboration within the organization. It allows us to streamline the design process by reducing the manual counting and entering of table data through the extraction of selected entities and blocks within the drawing. The new cycling selection tool helps declutter overlapping entities and streamline design workflow. Display the cycling selection dialog box where you click and easily select the highlighted object among the overlapping entities. New and future contextual ribbon tabs optimize design workflow with a maximized viewing and working area. Design faster with a view of only relevant options and related commands for entity creation and modifications grouped in one convenient tab. Save time adjusting print settings by reusing custom print configurations saved entirely within the drawing or drawing templates in the improved page layout manager. Improve usability of floor plan design with support for quick preview and direct floor edits through the improved Home by Me add-in integration. Offline mode provides adaptability to your workflow by letting you work anytime and anywhere, regardless of internet connection. Never lose design changes with local file saving and easily save to the 3D Experience platform when you are back online. Simplify data migration with batch uploads of drawings to the 3D Experience platform and detection of duplicate files. That concludes our presentation. If you still have any questions, please ask in the live Q&A and I will address them shortly. Thank you, and now let's shift over to the Q&A for the rest of our time.